roots of Orthodox spirituality. A wondrous journey into Orthodoxy. Prepared and presented by Angeliki Antonaku Lekea. Hello, dear listeners. We are continuing to read from the book Spiritual Awakening, the second volume in the series Spiritual Councils by St. Paisios. There was such bravery in the past. Yeroda, once you told us something about your grandmother. My grandmother was a very brave woman. She always carried a scimitar with her for security. You see, she was a widow with two children. How could she make ends meet with the Turks? Those were difficult years. Everyone was afraid of her. She was a true palikari. Once a thief went to steal from the vineyard near the cemetery. To frighten the people, the thief wore a white shirt which covered his entire body. He entered the cemetery and wandered around the graves. Right then, my grandmother happened to pass by the cemetery. As soon as he saw her, the thief laid down and pretended to be dead, hoping to frighten her by taking him to be some vampire. But she came up to him and told him, If you were a good man, the earth would have consumed your body. She then turned the scimitar on its blunt side and started beating the thief. She beat him very severely. She didn't even know who he was. Later in town she heard about someone who had been somehow severely beaten and that's how she found out who he was. Brave people are rare in our times. People today are lukewarm. That's why if, God forbid, a war breaks out, some will die out of fear. Others will fall on the street from some minor hardship because they are so used to comforts. In the past, people were so brave. In the monastery of the Flavians in Asia Minor, the Turks had captured a man and slaughtered him. Then they told his wife, Either deny Christ or we will kill your children too. And she replied, My husband is now with Christ, and my children I entrust to Christ, and I will not renounce Christ. What bravery! If Christ is not in us, how can there be such bravery? Today, people without Christ are building their homes on rubble. In those years, the mothers and the children were brave and courageous souls. In Konica, I remember a pregnant woman who would walk alone an hour and a half away to hold the cornfield. There she gave birth to her child wrapped it in her apron, and returned home. As she passed by our home, she told us, I now have a baby. This happened during the difficult years of the occupation. Now there are women who, out of fear, spend six or seven months lying down in order to give birth to a child. Of course, it is different for those women who have to do this for reasons of health. Natural fear serves as a break. Yeroda, I am very afraid and think of what am I going to do in some difficult situation. Where does this fear come from? Maybe someone suffered something as a child and is now afraid because of that. Many times the fear may be natural, but it can also stem from a lack of faith, from the lack of trust in God. But fear can also be a break because it helps man to turn to God. Man is afraid and looks to find something to hold on to and is then forced to hold on to God. 
You see, in tropical jungles inhabited by wild native people, there are also wild animals, large beasts, boas, and so forth, in order to force the people to seek help from God, to turn to God, and to find their path. Otherwise, what would it take to constrain these people? All that God has made serves some purpose. Those who do not know the true God and who out of fear seek help, do they receive help? Look, they turn their head upward, and that too is something. Even for young children, fear is a break. Some children, if they are not threatened a little, don't listen to anyone, neither father nor mother. When I was a small child, they told me about the bubulos, the scary being who is supposed to frighten children into obedience. It is natural for a young child to be afraid, but as the child grows up, the mind matures and the fear subsides. Natural fear is helpful during our childhood years. When a person grows up and still fears the most insignificant things, then he is to be pitied. Spiritual people come to my Kalivi and tell me, someone next door to us has died and since then we are terribly afraid all the time. They ask me to pray for their fear to go away. My response to them is this. Here we try to cultivate a constant memory of death for our spiritual edification, and you want to dispel this fear of death because someone has died next door to you. There is a little extra natural fear among women. Few are the women who are not afraid. But these same women may also create problems in the family by not subordinating themselves. By the same token, a man who is not by nature timid and who has a certain air of bravery may become impudent. And there are some women who are extremely afraid. When a woman has a natural fear and she struggles with it to acquire courage, this is a significant achievement. Women, who by nature has the spirit of sacrifice, also has much self-renunciation, which a man may not have, in spite of his natural manliness. He who is not afraid of death is feared by death itself. Geroda, how does fear go away? With bravery, the more we fear, the more we become susceptible to temptation. He who is afraid needs to try to dispel his fears. When I was a small boy, I was afraid to pass by the cemetery. For this reason, I slept three nights in the cemetery, and the fear went away. I made the sign of the cross and entered, without lighting a flashlight, to avoid alarming anyone at night. If one does not struggle to be strong and mature, and if one does not acquire authentic love, he will find himself in difficult situations and become utterly lamentable. In other words, Yeroda, can someone train himself so as to not be afraid? He should be glad to die so others may not die. If he can put himself in this position, he will never be afraid of anything. A spirit of bravery is born from an abundance of goodness, love, and self-sacrifice. But today, people do not want to hear about death. I have learned that funeral directors no longer use the term office for funerals, but office of services, so as to avoid any reference to death. But if people do not think about death, they are living outside reality. Those who fear death and love the vain life of this world also fear germs and are constantly overcome by a timidity that always grips them in a state of spiritual death. Daring people are never afraid of death, and that is why they struggle with philotimo and self-renunciation. Because they place death before them on a daily basis, they prepare themselves more spiritually, and they undertake a more daring discipline. This is how they overcome the vanity of the world and experience while alive, the joy of eternal paradise. Even in war, whoever struggles for his ideals, 
his faith, and his country should make the sign of the cross and not be afraid. God provides and helps. If he makes the sign of the cross and puts his life in God's hands, he will then judge if he should live or die. Is it possible for someone to not be afraid out of thoughtlessness? This is much worse, for in some critical danger he can suffer such a jolting that will completely undo him once and for all, whereas someone who is a little afraid will be careful and will not expose himself thoughtlessly to dangers. He may be forceful and daring, but he must also trust in God and not in himself. Courage is of great merit. In a time of disaster, more harm is done from the panic which is created. In a time of danger, the most important thing is to keep calm and collected. We see sometimes how the hen challenges the eagle and goes after him, and the cat attacks the dog to save her kittens. It raises its tail straight up like a cypress tree and starts to hiss. A cat is ready to risk everything, while we humans are timid and scared. Do not panic. Women especially panic easily. During the occupation, I remember we had to go to a place two hours away from Konica. The children were walking ahead and found some helmets and military clothing of Greek soldiers, put them on, and went to the chapel of St. Constantine the Great. I was there too. I had gone to worship. I was 17 years old. As soon as the mothers saw them from afar, they began shouting, The Italians are coming, and they turned to go away. They did not stop to look and see what was really happening. The children, after all, were wearing Greek helmets. Assuming they were Italians, the mothers fled in fear of their own children. Courage is of great merit. If you tell a healthy person who lacks courage, you look pale, what is the matter with you? He will run to the doctor, when in fact he may be pale simply because he didn't get a good night's sleep, or his tooth was aching, and so forth. A Greek will either lead the way or panic. Cowards are useless. In wartime, such people are not wanted at all. They cannot be trusted. They will not be included in an attack on the front lines so they don't create problems. A cowardly soldier, not knowing the strategic plan, can create enough panic to make an entire division go to pieces. Fear magnifies the imagination, and he can easily begin shouting, Look, they're coming! They're here! They're killing us! Run! Where can we go? They have so many troops. He can do a lot of damage because others are readily influenced by such cries. On the other hand, one who is bold and brave will see the enemy and say, They're ants, not men, come on men, and the others charge forward with boldness. This is why they say in the army that it is better to have five bold men facing a situation with composure than twenty cowards. Yeroda Sometimes during a difficult situation involving a group of people, it is not so much the external dangers as the dangers from within. Yes, that's true. The Turks would not have been able to take the fortified Suli if it had not been betrayed by Pilios Gusis, who was from Suli. 
he led the enemy up a secret path. You see, five villages were united in harmony and could stand up to the army of Ali Pasha, who had the power to go against the Sultan. Sultan in Turkish means leader, the title given to the leaders of the Ottoman Empire and later to the leaders of other Muslim countries. Suli was close to the region controlled by Ali Pasha, but still they were able to deal with him effectively. The women of Suli were especially united among themselves and demonstrated great bravery. They too took up arms to defend themselves. Discipline Keronda, when somewhere there is usually a lack of discipline, is it possible to have discipline in a critical situation? When there is a fire, for example, people don't just do whatever comes into their heads. Everyone on the team awaits directions from the leader. The one person in charge looks over the situation and determines what needs to be done. Otherwise, a panic could develop and instead of putting out the fire, they could intensify it. Once I was returning to the holy mountain. When we got to the point between the monasteries of Vatopedi and Pandokratoros, a northeast wind began to blow and the sea began to swell. The captain turned the boat into the wind and sailed against the waves, because otherwise we would have sunk. A timid man from Yerisos, who knew nothing about boats or the sea, he worked with mules, started shouting to the captain, What are you doing? You'll drown us. Don't you see? He's taking us to Kavala. With that, the others got up and turned on the captain. But the poor captain insisted, Let me be. I know what I am doing. Fortunately, one of the passengers was a seaman and was able to calm them down by saying, Leave the captain alone. He knows what he's doing. He's cutting into the waves this way and saving us from sinking. If he were not there, the boat might have sunk because the others were not letting the captain do his job the way he knew best. You see, only one man was afraid, but he created such a panic among the others on the boat that they could have sunk it. But then again, for such circumstances, there is always a second mechanic to take the helm if the first is in some way incapacitated. Greeks are not easily disciplined. Roman Catholics rely on the infallibility of their Pope. We rely on our own thinking and imagine that we all have this infallibility. Why is it said that the Turks have good policy? Because few are the Turks with brains, while the majority of them are ignorant. Consequently, the capable few become leaders, and the others naturally follow and obey them. The Greeks, because virtually all of them are very intelligent, all want to govern, to give orders, and can be subdued only with great difficulty. The Italians used to say of us, out of ten Greeks, the five want to be in charge. Let us assume that we want to go somewhere. One person knows a shortcut. Another knows a way round the other side of the mountain and still another knows yet another best way to go. Each one starts insisting, This is the way we must go. No, says the other. This is the better way to go. Finally, hours and days may pass without them getting started. They'll stay in the same place until one of them can give the order and the others follow. But if one can give the order and say, This is the way we will go, even if it is the longer way, at least they will eventually get to their destination. Of course, if the one giving the order also knows the shorter way, this would be better. In any case, even if they take the longer road by obeying the command, they will still arrive. God sees the good intention and helps. If the times demand something extra, something more than the usual, 
and you don't have a developed spiritual state, but only a good intention, will you still be able to stand the strain? Of course you will. God sees the good intention and helps. Then again, quite often, during difficult times, people who do not seem to have any courage will demonstrate great bravery. I remember in the army a lieutenant who had never given a sign of sacrifice or bravery. Once, when we were in danger of being captured by the guerrillas, he had taken position by a country chapel and with one automatic weapon was able to pin them down while we retreated to safety. He stood his ground and fired up and down, left and right, and did not allow them to pass. Finally, he left his post so we wouldn't see what he had done. Later, he never even boasted, I delayed them so you could escape. We all said, one automatic weapon saved us, and because we were saying it, he said it too. In the end, however, we realized who had been missing from the group at the critical time and understood who the hero who saved us was. If he had been captured, the enemy would have taken it out on him and tortured him most severely. A man of the world, and yet he made such a sacrifice. He sacrificed himself because he placed himself in greater danger than all of us. Do you sacrifice yourselves like this? He had neither read the writings of the fathers, nor did he know much about spiritual things. I knew him, he had a simplicity about him, a sense of honor. And there were others who would find a dead gorilla, cut off his head, and parade around town with it to show how brave they were. That's why it's not enough to simply be brave. One must also have the spirit of sacrifice, so that bravery can have an impact. By their faith in the Trinity, O God of our fathers, blessed art thou, most holy Mother of God, save us. Having willed us, O Savior, to dispense our salvation in thine economy, thou dwelt within the maid's womb, and unto all creation has protectress of children forth. Dangers must be faced spiritually. Readiness and bravery are needed during critical times. During the occupation, the Italians would take four or five animals, come to our field, and load them with melons. Once I told them, we're keeping these melons for seed. Take those over there. The Italians lifted up his whip and said, Do you see this? I took hold of the whip, looked at it, and said, Bene. That is, it's a good whip, as if he had shown me his whip to see if I liked it. In that instant, his anger broke. He laughed and went away. I remember another incident during the guerrilla warfare. Two soldiers had gone to the fields and asked the owner to let them eat some melons or a few tomatoes. They left their guns to one side and proceeded. As the owner saw them from a distance, he picked up his own gun to fire at them. In an instant, one of the soldiers picked a red tomato and shouted to the owner, Put the gun down or I'll send this grenade flying right at you. The owner put the gun down and went away. What quick-witted preparedness and bravery! Another soldier had hung his overcoat on a wild pear tree at a distance. Shortly after that, an armed gorilla came down from the mountain and could have captured the soldier. Turning to his overcoat, he shouted, Captain, what shall I do with this one? And then, as if receiving a signal from the captain, the soldier told the gorilla, Bring your weapon here. He then grabbed the gun and disarmed him. Yeroda, was the overcoat the captain? Yes, he was the overcoat. You see, he was alone, with only his overcoat, and he succeeded in disarming the gorilla fighter. Using this technique, he was able to gather many weapons from the guerrilla fighters. It takes bravery. I also remember a Russian monk on the holy mountain when thieves went to rob him. The moment the thieves were climbing the wall, he stood on the wall and shouted down to the thieves, Do you want to have it with a six-shooter or the twelve-shooter? 
The thieves ran off and never even looked back. Another monk, when thieves went to his cell to rob him, picked up a small frying pan and pretended to be making a telephone call. Yes, yes, thieves are here at my cell. The thieves, assuming he had called the police, went away. Another time, again, a huge man had taken a shepherd by the neck and was trying to choke him. As the poor shepherd's eyes were stretched out in fear, his assailant asked, Why are you looking at me with such wild eyes? And the shepherd told him, I am looking to see which mountain peak I am going to throw you at. The assailant was frightened and left. That is why I say that we must not lose our cool at critical times. We must stay calm and let our brain think. Because if the brain doesn't think, one simple foolish move can become an act of betrayal. No matter what is happening, we must pray, think, and act. The best way is to try to face a difficult situation by spiritual means. But today, unfortunately, we lack both types of bravery, both the spiritual and the natural. Spiritual bravery is born out of sanctity and a boldness before God that enables us to overcome a difficulty by spiritual means. Natural bravery helps us maintain our composure and avoid showing cowardice in a time of danger. One must have much sanctity to prevent a great evil, otherwise where can he possibly find support? If even one soul in the monastery has spiritual bravery, he can stop anyone with evil intentions in his tracks, with one leg inside the wall and the other outside. The enemy will be struck on the head with spiritual weapons, with the gomoshini, with the Jesus prayer, and not with a pistol. He will pray a little, and the other will remain motionless outside. He will remain there as a guard. A soul in a spiritual state can hold evil at bay, help people, and keep the monastery safe. The mere bearing women didn't worry about anything, because they were in a spiritual state and placed their trust in God. If they had not been in a spiritual state, what would they have trusted in to do what they did? In the spiritual life, even the most cowardly person can acquire great bravery if he only places his trust in Christ, in divine help. Such a person can go to the front line and fight in a war and win, whereas those poor people who want to harm others, even if they are brave, will be afraid because they are aware of their guilt and can only rely on their barbarism. The man of God has divine powers and righteousness is on his side. You can see a little puppy bark at a wolf and the wolf goes away because it feels guilty. God has so planned things that even a wolf can be afraid of a little puppy because it too has rights in the home of its master. Now, how much more afraid will be someone who seeks to harm a person who holds Christ in his soul? For this reason, let us only fear God not men, no matter how evil they may be. Fear of God transforms even the most cowardly person into a brave hero. The more we are united with God, the less we are afraid of anything. God will help us in our difficulties, but for God to provide divine power, man must offer whatever little he has and can give. And thou art much Dear listeners, our show has come to an end. Thank you for listening. We will continue once again where we left off in our next show. Until then, be well. Readings of Orthodox Spirituality Wondrous journey into orthodoxy. Lord, Prepared and presented by Angeliki Andonaku Lekea. <laughs>